Hello, everyone. Welcome to the DMV Business Show. My name is Odo Sevilla, and today our special guest is Christopher Schaefer. Christopher is the owner and founder of Christopher Schaefer Clothier. He has been voted City Papers Best Tailor, Baltimore Magazine's Best Menswear, and Baltimore Style Reader's Choice Best Menswear in 2019 and 2020, and I'm sure 2021 as well. Welcome to the show, Christopher. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Of course. My pleasure. Thank you. As I mentioned offline, I'd like to start off with giving the audience a little bit of background of who you are as an individual. Are you from around the area here in Maryland or where, where am, did you grow yeah. up? I grew up in Anne Arundel County, so uh, just south of the city um, and then lived in the city for years. And now I live uh, kind of north, northeast of the city. Okay. So Anne Arundel, Anne Arundel County, like Annapolis or... Uh, I went to Millersville, Glen Burnie area. I went to oh. Mill High School. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, we have a shopping center there on Old Mill Road off of Veterans Highway. That's the spot. Yeah. That's but, the spot. Yeah. <laughs> where, which one? Which one on Old Mill Road? Uh, you know where the shoppers is? Yeah, I'm thinking farther down. My brother used to have an office. It was next to the 7-Eleven on Old Mill Road down by where, um, you know, farther down the road. Yes, yes. Uh, but I'm very familiar with that park, uh, with that area and then Severna Park. We also have another center right there on Ritchie Highway. Yep. Uh, so I'm very, okay. That's so you've grown a lot down there. It's grown quite a bit. It has. Uh, there's a new Harris Teeter that just opened there about a year or two ago that's, that's doing great. That's a great store. Yeah. So you grew up around there and, and then you said, oh, high school, everything through there? Yeah, I went to high school there and then um, and lived around that area. And then I worked for an airline for years and I lived over uh, over in Linthicum. So I was over by the airport um, and then uh, and then ended up going and um, at some point thereafter moved to the city because I was in the, spending all my time in the city. And I decided I wanted to live there and live there for ended up living in town for 10 years or something like that. And uh, and then when I met my wife um, and we then when we got married, I moved up to Perry Hall. So she works at Aberdeen Proving Ground. And so it's a good halfway point between her work and me being, and, you know, running a shop that's in the city. Sure. So Christopher, growing up in Anne Arundel County, how were you as a child? What were you into? Uh, a lot of same stuff I'm into now, actually. I still like, um, I like to skateboard a lot. Uh, so it's like, I still do that. I've been a drummer all my life. So um, those things that I started doing as a kid, I still actually really like doing. So, um, you know, that, that type of stuff, riding bikes around everywhere, you know, it's like that, that kind of stuff is still, um, a, you know, still a lot of fun. And I, now I do it with my own kids, which is really cool. So yeah, it's fun. Sure. Were you ever in the band? You mentioned drumming. Yeah. I've been a drummer all my life. So it's like, I've been, I've been in lots of bands over the years and right now I'm kind of, uh, I mean, it's like even like at my shop, we have a whole stage. I, at some point, I'll give you like I'll give you a tour around so you can kind of see what the place looks like. But we have a stage here and everything, and this is where I rehearse and everything. Now I was actually just jamming last night, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do musically next right now. So, um, but that's a big part also of the business is that we kind of really marry uh, music and fashion together and do them in a way where it's not in a stuffy environment and it's coming from a you know, an authentic place of just, you know, of what my history of growing up and, you know, being in bands and being into, you know, punk rock and rock and roll and everything, just kind of blending that all together with high-end men's fashion. It's a, it's a great juxtaposition that works. So, but it's, it's kind of comes to, you know, it's like talking about like the early years, it comes from a funny place is that when I was a kid and I had a paper route and everything, I got a paper route so that I could raise money to buy my own clothes you know because i have older brothers and i was getting all the hand-me-downs and then i wanted to start to buy my own clothes so it's like so i've been one way or another it's like i've been in the clothes you know for a long time it's been something it's like you know it used it's it's even when it was you know like all the punk stuff and everything like that it's still fashion based you know what i mean it's it's still a big part of it and so but now it's just you know super high you know really high-end stuff it's you know but it I would have never thought I'd be in this line of work, but I love it. It's great. That's great. Christopher, you mentioned paper route and getting enough money for you to buy your own clothes. How old were you? Do you remember roughly around what age were you? Fifth grade. Fifth grade. 
Okay. So like yeah. 10, almost 10, around 10 years old then, right? Uh, 10, 11 years old. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, so that, you know, it's like, it's a shame that job is gone. That was such a good, like, it, like I, I delivered the Maryland Gazette, which was two days a week. It was Wednesday and Saturday. So it was perfect, it, you know, but it's, I, I learned so much from that about delivering the paper and customer service, collecting money, you know, it's like all those things. And it was a great first job to have. I had that for five years. So, you know, it was like, it really helped me to make my own money for buying things that I wanted and taught me about, you know, like you gotta, you gotta get the paper out to people on time and you gotta collect and, you know, so it was like, it was sort of great intro to being an, an entrepreneur kind of, you know, so, um, and even throughout everything with being in bands and everything like that, it's like, you know, you're still, you have to book your own shows and everything like that. So all it's like, I can look at it now and think of how those all things shaped me to who I am right now. And, um, but I've been having a, you know, been having a good time with it. I love the clothes that we're designing and everything like that. It's, you know, I'm, not, I'm having, and I think that's the main thing. If you're having fun with what you're doing, that's, you know, it's, it, it can be contagious, you know? So um, that's the, that's the approach that I take with it. And, you know, I, I love, you know, it's like, I love the space that I'm in, you know, and like, the setup that we have here and the, the cloth that we're working with. I mean, it's like, it's, it's not, a, not a bad way to make a living. I, I know you mentioned you, you never thought you would be doing what you're doing now, but back then, is that sort of the first thought as far as you into clothing? You know, you 10, 11 years old, trying to raise enough money to go buy your own clothing? Or was it before then as far as your interest in that? I, well, I mean, that's when it really, you know, it's like, so my, my older brother is like, four years older than me you know so i was getting like hand-me-downs that were also out of style yes, you know what i mean so yes. like and then you start really becoming aware you know and you're like i don't really like this stuff and my parents you know like they did right by all of us but my parents had five boys wow. so yeah so it's kind of like you know and i was like they always took care of the basics and all that good stuff but if i wanted really to kind of bring up the style stuff i i said you know i realized i'm like you got to earn your own and so i did that and so I became aware of it and then, you know, you're going through middle school and, you know, you have your own style of stuff and everything like that. And it definitely affects, you know, not everyone. I mean, I see it with my own kids. My kids are like, you know, I don't know if it's because of what I'm into now, but, you know, my kids, you know, my young, my two younger kids, they definitely have a style about them and they choose what it is that they want and how they want to present themselves and stuff. But some kids don't. Some kids are like, they just take whatever their parents give them and, you know, and other kids are more into what they, how they want to present themselves. And I, I was, it was like, you know, I, I, I've known the power of clothing for a long time, you know, and, and it's like, cause it's, it's how people are going to read you, right. They're going to, you know, and, and I certainly feel different when I'm suited up than when I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. And I, and I feel like you get treated differently by people by how you present yourself like that. Cause that's what you're giving them to work with. It, it, it's so true. It's, and I remember even myself growing up and I think I was in retail in a clothing store for probably over five years. Um, but similar to you, I, I've always had an eye for things like that with, you know, the vision, how you look, the, the tailoring or even the clothing. Yep. And, and, and even now pre COVID, of course, every day I would go, I would be probably <clears throat> the only one in my office like suited up like this. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was just something about it. I, I would just see it as my uniform. Um, th that's how I would see it. But everyone, you know, everyone's different, like you said. Sure, of course. You know, that's, it all depends on, look, some people are into wearing suits when they're little kids, you know what I mean? So it's like, there's, everybody's different about, it, it took me a while as far as my progression of my uh, maturity and wisdom. It's, you know, it's like, so I wasn't ready for this part of my life when I was earlier, because I kind of had to go through all the other chapters and it ended up being, you know, for me that after I got married, we moved to London for my wife's work. And that was where I learned how to design suits. And really, you know, the joke was is that I went over there. I didn't even own a suit at that time because that wasn't how I was into dressing, you know? So it's like, but I, I think that gave, I had such an open mind because I knew what I didn't know and so, and I was eager to learn and I had great teachers. So when you put that all together, you can make some magic happen. And that's kind of, you know, it's like, a, that's what happened. And I, I, I really like being a foreigner. It was fun being a foreigner. I, I, I get it now. When I meet people from other places, 
it's exciting when you're somewhere new and you're different from everyone else. And I got to experience that and I really liked it. And it had a, a big effect on me. And um, I, you know, it's, God, London was such a magical city. To, it was such a cool place to live, you know? So I try and bring all that's, that's a whole part of the experience of when you come into my shop is that it's a, it's the, you know, I get a lot of people coming here and they, it makes them feel like they're in New York city. Cause it has sort of a New York city kind of, you know, it's a loft vibe that's in here. But I, there's definitely a lot of English influence with a, the, a lot of the cloth we're dealing with and this, the tailoring style with it. But then now with my oldest son being in Los Angeles, we kind of bring this like West Coast kind of uh, in different fields, all of it. But that you can do that when you're doing custom clothes. You know, it's like, what does the client want? How do they want to present themselves? And then you bring it all together and design something that they're going to really like wearing. And that's what we do. Christopher, I'm glad you mentioned London. Prior to your London uh, trip and living there, were, were you already before that in, in the clothing and tailor industry or were you were doing something totally different? Totally different. So it's okay. like, I, yeah, I've been like, uh, you know, kind of had many jobs over the years. And, um, you know, it was kind of like when, when I was younger, I got a job with an airline and I was loading planes and working out on the ramp, loading the planes and pushing back the planes and all that stuff. And I did that for like eight years. And uh, it was a great physical was, job. Was this BWI? Yeah, BWI. Okay. So I worked for Continental Airlines for eight years and uh, <clears throat> it was cool. I got to travel for free basically. So that was a big perk, you know, and like, I, I love to travel. So that kind of opened up the world to me a bit, you know, because I was, able to do that at an early age. And I think travel is just, it's so, it's, it's invaluable, you know, cause it gets you out there to see that it's a big world, you know, it's beyond where you just grew up and what you see right around you. You get to get out there in the world and realize like things are done differently in different areas. And, and all that stuff really shaped me a lot. And I was, so I was doing, you know, it was like, I was doing that. And then, what, then my oldest son was born and I realized I'm like, I'm not traveling as much. I have a, we have an infant right now. And I kind of wanted to get normal hours. And my brother, my brother had the, he had the uh, Allstate Insurance office was right next to the Seven Eleven on Old Mill Road. Okay. So he, so it's like, and I was like, uh, he, you know, he, um, he was out trying to do business development, and he's like, I can't leave the office without something in the office that's licensed. And he's like, if you go and get licensed, I'll pay to take the testing and everything like that. And I was like, all right, I'll go do it. I didn't really want to get into doing insurance work but I knew that I didn't want to have the crazy hours and I wasn't, I wasn't using the benefit of the travel anymore because I was now a young father. And so I got into doing that and it was like, it was a way to be able to have like a steady Freddy daytime job, you know, and it worked for me. So, it, so I did that for years and then, and it was like, uh, it, my heart, it was like, it wasn't, wasn't my passion, but it was like, I was doing what I needed to do and I was playing music and I was doing all these other things that I like doing and stuff. And, uh, but then you, London was a game changer for me, you know, and it was like, and it happened in such a weird way because we got married in September of 06 and then bought our house in the spring. And three days after we closed on the house, we found out we could go to London. Oh, so wow. it was like first house I ever bought. And I was like, and then, you're a new homeowner and you're all excited. And then it's like, Hey, you can go move to another country if you want. And so we were shell shocked and, um, but we decided, you know, we'd be fools not to go. And we went on this adventure that I had no idea. I figured this was good for Gina's, my wife, Gina was good for her work. And so I figured, well, I'll go, let's see what happens. No, like I had no idea I'd go over there and learn about designing suits. I just knew that it was good for her. It was a great opportunity. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. And it was just, it was like a huge leap of faith and being like right place, right time. And that was a game changer for me because when I came home from there, you know, soon after I realized I'm like, I need to start my own business. I need to do this my own way. And we just hit uh, 10 years of being in business. Oh, wow. So, Congrats. Thank you. So it's like, so that sort of kind of is how it got from like paper boy to now, you know what I mean? <laughs> sort of that's like kind of, 
Yeah, yeah. Christopher, so so when, when you hear the news, you're going to London, you just purchased a home book just a couple of days ago. What, you, you rent it or you put it back on the market for sale? And no, you... we rented it. Okay. We, we lived, so we, uh, it took a while to put the whole thing together. So we lived in the house for five months. But we, okay. we, we put one painting on the wall. We're like, <laughs> why should we put holes all on the wall? No, I sure. It was like, there was a nail that was over top of the fireplace and we put one painting up there because it was and just and it was like why put stuff all and we're going to be moving so it was like so it was a it was weird because you you normally you buy a house you're like let's furnish it let's do it and it was like no just kind of let's wait and go and, and we had to um we shipped over like a third of our stuff and the other two thirds went into storage while we were gone and but it was a it was an amazing time i mean it was like it was really pretty freaking awesome so i'm glad i'm glad we did it and, uh, but it was, it was, the crazy thing was when my wife told me that we could go, neither one of us talked about it for a week to each other because neither one of us knew what to say. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know what was the right answer. And we kind of, as we, as this time went by and then we said, you know, we bought a house that was built in 1959 and we're like, this house was here before us. It'll be here when we're gone, but this opportunity won't. And so we're like, let's go and give it a shot and see what happens. And we went over there and it just it changed the trajectory of everything for me. So you, Gina's, Gina's her name, right? Yeah. Okay. So you and Gina arrive in London and by then, is it just still one child or do you already have? Yeah. So, so I, so Seth was, Seth's my oldest son. Okay. And um, so he, uh, so we went over there. Is it, he stayed back here, right? Oh, he stayed here. He stayed here and okay. then would come over and visit me over there. Oh, so, okay. So, um, so yeah, so it, but it was like, we decided to come home because my wife was pregnant and with my son whose birthday is today, his name is Jackson. He turned 12 today. Okay. So, so, um, so yeah, she, you know, it was like, okay, we're, it's, we're, we were like, okay, she's got a bun in the oven. We have a house back home. Let's go back home and get in like and get ourselves, you know, kind of get back and see. But that was also, you know, this was all, you know, it, it was, you know, all the recession stuff was going on. It, you know, it's like when you get when you go back 10, 12 years ago, mm -hmm. it was almost I mean, it wasn't what we're what we're dealing with now is. So it's like science fiction, you know, but um, it was it was tricky then, too. And it was a tough time to go and start a business to be talking to people about custom suits for sure. Definitely. I'm curious, when you arrived to London, you weren't thinking about going into tailoring. So how did you even land there in that industry? You just found something? So, or? Well, so it, the way that things were at that point was that it was very much like monster.com and all of those like load up your, uh, you know, load up your resume. And, um, and the, at that time, what was what I found different than what here is that there was a, it was all headhunters, you know? So it was like, it was, um, it was pretty much like all of these like uh, agencies that were finding people jobs. You weren't necessarily like dealing directly with uh, an employer. And um, this guy by the name of Greg Smith, um, who I'm still friends with to this day, uh, a guy that's a, he's, um, he's younger than me. And he was, uh, he was a headhunter and he saw my resume, called me up and uh, we started talking and I, you know, I told him, I was like, cause I'd, I'd been out on other interviews and everything. And I was having a really hard time because I was an American with a work visa. And it was like, and I thought I've always been able to find job and find work in the States. There shouldn't be a big deal. Not the case when you're in a foreign country. It's like the whole, it was like, I was bottom of the totem pole and I leveled with this guy, told him what was going on and we hit it off. And, uh, and he's like, I'm going to see what I can do to help you out. And he called me up and said, I got this opportunity to um, where you could learn how to design suits. And I was like, I don't wear suits. I don't know anything about them. And he's like, well, you're, he goes, you know, you, you're, you seem like you're creative and you're willing to hustle. And I was like, I got that in spades. And so, uh, so he, you know, he, he set it up and, um, and, you know, he, he, I'm, like I said, we're still friends to this day. You know I mean? He, it was like, because of him, of somebody that was like, Hey, I'm going to help you out and really look after you. He helped me to go and land a job and have 
and have great teachers. And I, and now I realize that now with being a teacher is that, you know, it's like when, when the student is implementing the advice and the teachings, is it, you, you be, you become a better student and they teach you more. And, and that's what happened to me. So I try and do that with people that work with me is it's like, you know, make it so they can be really engaged and make decisions on stuff and be a part of the process. And, you know, like that, I just think it makes it more exciting, you know? And so that's, that's the way I handle it. But yeah, it was, I did not expect that to happen when we went to London at all. So you, you really got into it and it sounds like you, you found the passion there. I felt like uh, I realized that when I was over there, the passion and the drive all before London was just being a musician. That's all I cared about. I mean, like, you know, people would ask me when I was a little kid, they'd be like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I was like, be a rock star. And people would giggle and, oh, you know, what's your backup plan? And I was like, I don't have one. And I, and I never, and I didn't, you know, and it was like, and, you know, as I got older, I realized I'm like, this is dangerous. You know, but I, I lived that life. I was really living that life for a long time. I was very into it. And I, I feel anything that I, if I get into something, I pour myself into it. I, 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 I'm like, I'm a hundred percent kind of person. And so, um, you know, and, and so that was, that was the passion, right? It was always about playing music. It ended up being that when I went to London, I was playing in a band. And before I left, I recorded all of my drum tracks. And I was like, I'm going to London. Let's see what you guys do with it while I'm gone. They worked on the, they worked on stuff while I was away. They'd send me stuff and I'd hear what was being worked on, but it gave me a chance to be in another country and it not be distracted. I wasn't distracted with family or music or I was really laser focused. And it's like, and it, and it was like, that's where I needed to be at that moment. So I could really focus on something. And, and I felt that, and I started seeing success. Right. I was like, I realized that I'm having good teachers and I started landing some great clients and, and it's like, and I, and I'm, you know, I'm being able to do something that's creative and I'm not having to rely on all these other people. I'm, I'm relying on self mm -hmm. and, and it was exciting. And I, and I realized somewhere along the line that I found my calling. And that was when I was like, okay, then this shift happened with music where I was like, I can play music for the love of it, not trying to make it be my livelihood. Cause I'd wrestled with that for a really long time. And I was able to kind of like free it, you know, because I found something that I really loved that I could do. And so this sort of shift happened where it's like, I mean, I, you know, I love music more than ever, you know, it's like, it's, it, but it, it's, it's really tricky when you're doing anything that you're passionate about, that you're creative about, and you're trying to make it be your livelihood. It's really tough. So the way this kind of came about with tailoring of something that was kind of a left field thing, but it, it checked all the boxes for being able to do something creative and dealing with people and being one-on-one -on -one and like all those things that I like about being conversational with people and all like, it, it really, it made it so it was very evident, you know, that it was like, you're at the right place. This is where you're supposed to be. And I was, and, and uh, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing actually now to think about it, the way it all kind of came together, but you know, it was it's been super happy with the way that it's all shaken out. And, and then what ended up happening is it like now, you know, I, I have made clothes for plenty of musicians and some famous ones. And I've been able to kind of see really what the life is really like. And, I, and I'm like, I, I like what I've going on. I'm happy where I am, you know? So it's like, and that's, that's important. You know, I've been miserable before when you're an artist or whatever, you, God, you think that like, you got to go through that, like starving artist, you know, you romanticize that. It's not really that fun. It sucks. So, but that's, you know, done and dusted. I, I, it sounds like that, that London trip was almost a godsend for you, Chris. hundred percent, man. Yeah. How, how, old, how old were you when you, when you did that trip? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, would have been, geez. Uh, you said 2007 30, or something? 35, 35. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Which is like, kind of, you know, it's like in, in the, it usually you'd be like, it's kind of late. But I was like, I, it's funny because I always knew that I was a late bloomer, right? It was like, because the stuff that I liked, I was kind of like, you know, I wasn't in a rush to grow up. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, I'm ha- like my whole, all I cared about was like having a good time for a long time, <laughs> for a very long time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Longer than most. But yeah. that, ended, that ended up getting me in my own trouble anyway, because it was like, because, you know, it was like I never wanted the party to end. And yes. then, you know, and then it's like, so that's what I'm saying. It's like, and when you're, when your focus is being a musician, well, you can really be, you know, uh, you can stay in a suspended state of adolescence for a very long time. Let's yeah. put it that way. You know what I mean? So, um, but it's like, you know, it, it worked out, landed on my feet. It took, you know, it's like might've had a couple, you know, but I, I'm like, I'm, I'm happy to say, you know, I'm here and, and, uh, but I also think that, you know, what ended up happening as I came home and started the business is that right at the same time, I started a nonprofit organization where we recycle suits to dress guys for job interviews who are trying to get back up on their feet. And so, it, you know, we, um, I've really taken the approach of when you give, you receive. And I've seen that in my own life. Because, I mean, look, frankly, I'm a guy who turned my life around, man. I, I, I was a crazy partier, and, like, I don't even drink at all anymore. It's like I had to stop all of that, and I realized that by helping other people, it helps me in return. And so, I, you know, I turned my life around, and I've got a really good thing going on, and I'm aware of because I know what it used to be like to be miserable. And, you know, and, and so I'm like, I don't want to go back to that. And so – I'm, I'm happy with what I have going on. I'm fortunate that I get to help other people. The more that you help other people, the more these doors open up for you. And, and so it's like, I, I'm amazed. It's like, I'm just, I'm on the ride. I'm just holding on and going for the ride. And it's been a lot of fun. And that's, that's, you know, it's like, I, it, it's, de- it's definitely a God thing. A hundred percent. It's like, and I'm good with it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I'm good with it. And I am very happy because if you've ever met the man downstairs, which I have no deal, <laughs> no deal, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you, you had that experience. Now, you know, yeah. <laughs> As I have. How, how long were you in London for? One year. One year. Okay. So you come back and, and right, right away, Chris, you know, I want to do my own thing or do you think about, no. okay. It took a while. It took, it took a, while. a while. Okay. Yeah. Was working for other people was working for someone else and just realized I was like, and it was just really tough because I saw, I saw the recession happening in London. Right. I, as I was coming, getting ready to come home, it was part of the, it was like, you could see it kind of unraveling. Right. It was when they, it was the first time that there was like the bail, the bank of England was doing bail. There was bailouts that were happening and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what is going on? And then it made its way to the States. Right. And I was like, oh no, this is, and it, it's, you know, it's like when you're calling people and they're saying, uh, call me when the Dow is over 10,000. Now it's like crazy to think about, but that was what was going on at that point. We're like, my portfolio is tanking. I can't think about suits, all of that stuff. And then when it was really dark days, I was like, I got to do this with my own. I got to do my own thing. So it's, it's been pretty fascinating, but now I'm like, I'm not stoked about where we are right now. This, you know, this is a rough time, but I think this is going to kind of pass and do its thing too. But we're almost a year into it. Yeah, it, it, it will pass eventually. Yep. So, so you come back, you go work for someone else, but in the end, you decide to open up your own shop, right? Yeah. A- after how long is that once you return and you start, and you're, when you're returning, you're still working for, for other clothing, local yeah. tailors, right? Yeah, yeah. Co- took a couple okay. years, actually. Okay. Took a couple years, that's why. So it's like, yeah, my son just turned, he's 12 today and the business is, 10 so yeah a couple years okay so we came home I came home had a baby so that was the thing it's like you know I got a young baby at home too and I'm like I'm starting my own business my wife was like you're that wasn't a fun conversation (laughs) but it's now it's kind of like I mean I had to it's like it's it's evident I had to had to do that to be here so when you open your first, when you open your, your business, you, you're automatically, no, I'm, I want to be in the city. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to Baltimore. Yes. The city is my spot. You know okay. what I mean? It's like, I love Baltimore. I love it. I, I it's, it's home for me. And I, I want to see it make the change that I think that, you know, I'm, I love yeah. it here. Love Baltimore, man. It's crazy, but it's the best. We're all rooting for it. Man, I tell you for real, for real. Um, the, the first spot was um, was out of my uh, music rehearsal space. 
So, um, so that's what I'm saying. The music and fashion thing has been since day one. So, cause, uh, me and my brothers used to run a, uh, a rehearsal spot for bands that was in uh, the station North area of Baltimore. And, uh, and when I started off, I was like, I needed to keep overhead as low as possible. And we had the space up there and it really was, the place wasn't really used during the day because everybody was pretty, you got it, everybody was pretty much uh, rehearsing and stuff at night. So in the daytime it was pretty quiet. And uh, so I started off out of there and I was there for about a year before I moved down to the building where I am now, which is in the Harbor East area. But even we moved into a place that was down the hall that we had to fix all up and stuff. And then I moved up into this space where I'm now uh, seven years ago. Okay. So kind of had to make a couple moves. And then three years ago is when my son opened up the shop in California. So there's been, you know, it's like been definitely doing some looking back on the last decade of what the, you know, how we got from there to here. And then also looking at how we're going to get from here, you know, to the, you know, coming at it. But I feel like it's like a pendulum, you know, it's kind of got to swing back, you know what I mean? And so, but it hasn't quite, I think it's all the way up, but I think we're going to start swinging back, but it's like, it's just, waiting and seeing and what you can control and what you can't control. And, you know, all so that you, your son's also your, your, your eldest son is also in the business, right? Yeah. He's my business partner. He's uh, he runs the shop in LA. He was working with me here for uh, he was here for four years and then has been out there for almost this spring will be three years. Okay. So yeah, it, which was kind of, it was, was, you know, it was great. We got to spend a lot of time together and we're really and like, we're, you know, very close and, um, and I, I miss him dearly, but he's, he's in a good spot. You know, we talk all the time and stuff and think that, um, you know, he's, he's got big plans for what he wants to do and the people that he wants to work with and, you know, and, and, uh, he's going to make some big stuff happen. LA is a, you know, there's, it's a, it's an interesting town. There's a lot of, a lot of people with, I'd looked to move out there a couple times. I've looked at it in my life and it just, I would have never thought that I would end up going the opposite direction and going to London. But it's like, but I do think that at some point moving away from home and being in a big city and stuff like, I think it's good for you, you know? So it's, and it's, it's been tough, you know, it's like he went out there, started getting some momentum and California's had uh, different lockdowns and stuff than we've had here. So it's made it even harder um, but it's looking like that stuff is all starting to lift and everything. So things are kind of starting to get some momentum going in the right way, which is great. So, uh, and I'm, it's been a year since I've been out there. Cause I was, I took my, I took my son Jackson out there for his birthday last year. And so it's been exactly one year since I was out there. I'm like, I can't wait to get back. I'm sure it's nice to see your, 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 your son going into what you're into, the sure. same the same industry i i'm sure he was exposed to it at, at a young age would you say that's one of the reasons also he decided to go into this as a career for himself well he you know it's like he's seen me be around it and seen sort of the change and then um and then i think that like uh you know i, I would invite him down and, and talk to him and be like you know what is it you're looking to do and everything and he wasn't really sure and then it was the same thing once he got a dose of success in this you know, it's like his first, like his first deal was with a father son thing that I went with him on. And it was like, I think it was for like five grand or something like that. You know what I mean? And he was like, it was a really cool experience with this other dad and his son. And they, we were all kind of around the same age. And, okay. and it was, just, and it's like, you know, when you, whenever you get like a, you know, like you have a big sale, or, it's exciting. You know what sure. I mean? And it's, so it's like, so. Um, and it kind of really sort of, you know, kind of, it sort of lit the flame a bit. And then, I, it, you know, it's interesting because like, you know, I, I have a younger guy that works with me now, Casey, and he's been with me for three years. And like, I've really seen him sort of develop year by year. And I think that's like, you know, I try and be the mentor that I wanted to have when I was younger that I, I didn't really have. So I, I knew what I was looking for. And I know it even more now after getting some success is that like how to help somebody to get to those, to get to the next steps. And I like being a part of the journey for somebody and seeing, seeing who they kind of blossom into, you know, and, and who they become and how they sort of 
in this business, you see how much different someone looks as they're suited up and they present themselves, but then you sort of grow your own style that comes out of it. And I encourage that. I don't want them to be, you know, up, up to mimic me. I want, to, I want to teach them and then see what they bring to the table. And I kind of keep it very open of, you know, when you're, because this is a creative business. So I want to see, bring your creativity to the table and let's kind of like mix stuff up and make it fun and, you know, and give them the opportunity to, you know, with running a small business of really being like, this is what it takes to run a business. And, you know, I'm the patriarch of all of it. And, but it's like, you know, but it's still very much, it's, it's very team driven. And yet and Casey's like, he's been doing a great job. You know, it's like, so and it was interesting time because he was coming on as Seth was leaving and he saw the vacancy that was left, you know, and he really kind of stepped up into it. And uh, it's, it's, it's working out, you know what I mean? And, and even in this really trying time, it's working out, but I'm trying to get back to the spot where I can really be holding down the fort here, going back and forth to the West coast. And we really grow, like, I really want to see us really grow the LA thing because I've always taken the approach that this isn't just a Baltimore brand, you know, it's like, it, I want it to be bigger than that. And, um, but you know, we got set back a bit, you know, the COVID definitely set us back for sure. I mean, you know, so, but it's, we're still, you know, shop's still open. We're still in business, which sure. you know, not, not everybody can say that, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's, it's where it is, but it's like the days are getting better. I truly believe that. Chris, but besides suits, I, I know you guys offer more than just suits there, right? If you can share some of the other product line that you also have available. When, is this a good time to give you a tour? If you want to, yeah. Sure. You don't have to, but you can. No, it's good. Let me see something here. Hang on a second. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. All right. So I'm going to walk you through the shop, okay? All right. So pink door is where you come in, right? There's an oil painting that was done with me and my son. Oh, that's done nice custom skateboard that was done and everything so here you come in and then we have these are all bow ties that are here right and then it goes into narrow width ties and then huge mirror that's here and then standard width ties and then we're doing pocket squares, cuff links, suspenders. And then up here, these are all fabrics for making sport coats out of. Okay. So you can just see there's just some really, really pretty fabrics that are here. Yeah, right? some nice patterns there. Absolutely. Then you get into this stuff here. These are all samples that are made up in different sizes to show you different sizing and different detailing and everything. So you can just kind of see some different stuff. This one shows you like how the actual jacket is made, you know, so see all that stuff there. Those are all samples there. This is a really funky, cool one. This is a deep red velvet. Nice. Quilted on the lapel, just funky, you know, but cool. So that's that there. And again, you go pretty classic here with a pinstripe, right? Mm -hmm. Then you get in all this fabric here that is suit fabric. These are four yard pieces of fabric for making suits out of. I like to house the I like to house the fabric here so that you can actually see, you know, a big cut of the fabric, and you can look at it in the sunlight and drape it over you and see what it all, you know, what it actually looks like so a bit of the rest of the space here i'll show you over there in a minute uh let's see here hang on for a sec then you come back to here we have cologne that's from england here some other grooming products from california a bunch of clothes that are there and then these are carmina shoes from spain really well-made shoes that are here so, and this was all relatively new as getting into being able to carry shoes and stuff too. I didn't used to have the space for it, but now we do, but you can kind of see, you know, what all's there, you know, during the pandemic stuff, we got into making masks as well, colorful socks, 
these are all sample clothes that we use for photo shoots and fashion shows and also just this is kind of like we'll sell this stuff off the rack mm -hmm. a beautiful 1953 nsu motorcycle that's a buddy of mine that he letting us keep here which is just gorgeous then you see these are fitting rooms and everything they're here so you kind of get a gist of this is sort of the showroom side and then over here this is where we uh we have events and we um we haven't been able to do anything because of the you know because of all the covid stuff that i have but i'll tell you how we've sort of pivoted is that this is this is sort of the party fun room oh, arcade okay uh-huh so it's like it's pretty awesome and then this is where oh wow yeah so it's like check this out this is where i rehearse and we do parties and stuff like that so we record in here and everything and then i have some friends that have subletted the rest of this room over here they're photographers and so they are doing a photo studio over here mm -hmm. So they're using the space over here and then I use the stage. And so we sort of divvy up the room because I can't do events and stuff in here. So we just sort of make it work like that. So this is sort of the other part of the house. And, um, but you know, most things happen so that you kind of get the idea as far as the, you know, as far as it goes with the stage and everything like that is it is definitely a big part of the business. And when we can start to gather again and all that good stuff, we'll start to have great parties, but can't do that right yet this is awesome chris i i love your studio thanks man that's all i was like i was like let me give you a tour around so you can kind of see you know what the place looks like and get the gist of it but um yeah i love it here this is like this is home away from home and um i love the environment in here and then you get people we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with people so the idea is that you come in you sit down we get a chance to talk and then you start looking at fabrics and you go through the whole process of all of it but uh it's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. I, and I love how you incorporate both the fun side of things with sort of the party, the event side with the business side. We've had some good parties in here. You know, it's like it's, it's a good space for that. And then you bring people together and you bring your clients together and then they can network with each other and have a good time. And, you know, it's just pulling from years and years of experience of doing all that. That's awesome. And you've been at this place for seven years now? Been in this spot for seven years um, the space where the stage is and everything, we got that three years ago, but we had to do a lot of work in there. That place took 100 gallons of paint to paint it. Wow. Okay. And we did it ourselves. So we did it ourselves. So it was like, it was, a, it was a lot of work to transform that space into what it is now. And, um, and so it's like, you know, and so when we do, you know, we do like bigger events and stuff, we'll open up both sides and really have great, you know, like we, we throw a good party, but it's, you know, you can't, no one can gather right now so you just gotta yeah. wait with time we'll be back I, what's I, that i said with time we'll be back you, you 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 look like a very good party host that you like to party especially with your background that you tell me yes <laughs> well so that's the thing is like we were supposed so we had big plans for our anniversary party which was going to be in october would have been 10 years i bumped it till may but i think i'm gonna I, i'm thinking about just going and i don't think we're ready for may so i think i'm just gonna Pull the plug on it until we're safe to do it in because it was going to be a black and pink theme which is the company colors so it's going to be a black and pink party and i think we're just going to wait until it's safe and then when it's safe we're going to really have a, a rager so it's like you just gotta you know when, it, when it's time it's time i'm hoping some things really kind of get cooking this you know in the springtime and summertime and by hopefully by autumn things are you know by as, as we get to the end of the year i'm hoping that we're more on track for normal you know, it, it may be even a double celebration for you, maybe around October. I know you'll be celebrating 11 years, but it'll be a 10, 11 type of bash. That's what, it's funny because I kept thinking about with the artwork of like slashing out 10, 10 and a half, 11, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, until you got to get there. But I, I'm like, I think I just, as much as I want to go and set the date for October, I feel like I just want to wait until, you know, until you just know, you know what I mean? Until you just know, because we've had big events in the past, you know, where it's like, our seven year anniversary was on a world war two ship with 600 people, you know, and like, and Seth's going away party was a huge masquerade ball at the engineers club. So like we've had some big, big parties and it's fun. You get everybody together, they're dressed up, they're having a good time. And you know, it's, it's, 
it's fun. So, and I, it's been a really interesting way to grow a business and, and have people meet each other and a reason to get dressed up and everything like that. And it's weird because I think about it now and like, now that you can't have events, I'm like, I miss it more than ever. Yeah. It, it sounds, it sounds like to me too, Chris, that your clients also become part of the family or friendship. Absolutely. Is yeah. that the case? Okay. I, that's the thing is like, you know, I'm, I'm in a spot where it's like I've been a dad longer than I've not been a dad. And it's like, and I come from a big family. So it's kind of like, it just sort of is, I don't know, it's in the blood, I think, you know? So, um, but yeah, it's also, I don't just consider my clients as clients. You know, you get to sit down and you get to know somebody and you're dressing them for important things in their lives. They become your friends, you know? And it's like, so, and and you really, I feel like the one-on-one part of getting to know somebody is that, that's important so that I can dress them for how they want to present themselves. Yeah, no, no, I agree. That's the fun part. What would you say, Chris, that drives you or motivates you today? Um, you know, it, it's, it's changed over the years. I mean, it's changed over the last year really, because I've got a lot of time, you know, I've, I've ended up, this has given me right in the beginning, we had to close for three months. So that was sort of like, oh my, and, and really, if you think about that time, it was like two weeks at a time, two weeks, you know, it, it sort of changed, you know, no one said in the beginning, hey, this is going to be three months, you're going to be closed, you know, it's like, so it, it, it gave me the opportunity to slow down, um, really started taking the approach of like, okay, I've been working for a decade on growing a business and, you know, and, and, and a lot of the success that I was after and things that I was after, I've been able to you know, been able to achieve. And so, but, you know, time, it, it's, it's, it's really been weird because it's made me look at it and realize like, you know, you only get so much time really, you know what I mean? And so, you know, it's, it's always been a, a balancing act or a tug of war or whatever between time and money. And I, I enjoy having my time and I like traveling. We just got back from three weeks of taking our RV down South to Florida and everything like that. And like, I love that stuff. You know, it's like, I love traveling and everything. So I realized I don't, you know, it's like, I don't live to work. You know what I mean? So, so it's, it's like, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to find like what there's always going to be someone financially more successful or more, you know, than you, you know what I mean? And it's like, and I get to work with people all the time with that. I think it's like, I, to me, there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy when you're wealthy, wealthy rhymes with healthy. And it's kind of, you know, it's, it's sort of like you put it all together. It's a, it's a, it's a holistic thing. Are you making the kind of money that you need to, and, and you have good relationships with the people around you. And, you know, it's like, I have that and I, and I, I like it. I want to maintain that and enjoy it. And when you're running a business, you also have to strike when the iron's hot right now. It's like, you know, the irons, it's been staying warm enough to make the, but it's like, and I've experienced it when it's red hot and then I think it'll be red hot again, but it's so in the, it, so what drives me right now is, you know, being able to spend the kind of time that I do with my family and enjoying myself. And like, I, I, I've, you know, I feel bad in a way of saying like, I've really enjoyed myself during this time, but it doesn't mean that it didn't affect me. It affected me greatly. You know, it's like, it's the business has been hit really hard, but I made a decision in the beginning of like, don't lose your marbles over this. You know, it's like, just sort of let it process as it processes. But, um, you know, it's, there's a couple things. It's, it's the part of having the time. It's the part of being in a situation where we can help other people. Cause I see how much that, like, it, it's, it's amazing how that works of when you just, it's, it's, it's like, uh, it ricochets, you know, there isn't a direct response of like, I help you, you help me. It's more that you just put it out there in the universe that you're helping someone and then you get taken care of on your own. And so I, it, you know, God, I just think about this time and how, like how much time has already passed and, and like where we are and where things are going and, you know, being able to enjoy time with, like, I think there's so many lessons that came with this pandemic and for me personally, like I've, I've really, you know, I've slowed down a lot. I've, I've really slowed down a lot and um, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. It's been, it's been quite nice. I mean, I, I miss the social aspect dearly, but um, it's going to come back. Yeah, it, it, it will. 
you've done a lot so far in your career. You still have a long way to go, Christopher. What do you think that stands out right now that you're most proud of thus far in your business career? I think it's coaching other people to be successful. I think that's the thing is like seeing it with my son, seeing it with Casey. It's awesome. It's like, you know, when you're, when you're a part of that, I mean, it's like the accolades and all that, that all that stuff is great, you know? And, uh, you know, and then there's, and then, then there's like, you know, uh, you know, as far as like, um, like physical stuff is that, you know, it's like, I have my dream hot rod that I wanted for a long time. I have a black, really super sick 1968 Camaro that's got a 454 in it. It's a beast. And like, I drive that and it's like the dream machine. It's something that I dreamed about for a long time. I get in it, go rocking and rolling down the road. And it always puts a smile on my face. And I'm like, you know, that's something I dreamed about for a long time. And I got it a couple of years ago. And like, cause I, I like, I like cars and motorcycles and stuff like that. And so it's, you know, that's kind of like, and I like a lot of vintage stuff. So, um, so it's like, that's one of those things of like, I'd wanted for a long time. I made it happen, but that's a, that's a physical, you know, thing to, the other part of it is like, you know, being able to go and being able to go and be in business with my son and teach him how to do this and for him to go off and start his own thing. And that he's, you know, that he's getting his own success and become his own person. It's like, that stuff is just, you know, my, my dad wanted that for his, he wanted that for his kids to be able to go and work together. And some of my brothers have worked together and stuff, but he, you know, it's like, I see now why he was so on that all the time, because it's like, you know, but we having that right now, I, I'm hoping that what I'm building, that it's like, this is a legacy business that goes on after I'm gone. So I feel like I'm just, trying to build a really rock solid foundation so that it's like, so that it can just, it can withstand and it can grow. And that's, that's way different than being like just in it for the money, you know? So that, that's the thing is like, I, I think that, I think that w what we're building and what I'm seeing, I think it could, it could go the distance and, you know, so you just got to play it smart, learn from other companies that are, especially in the clothing business, a lot of them, you know, you go public and then all of a sudden your quality is going down the tubes and, it's not what it used to be. I don't want to do that. You know, we're, we're at the top of the food chain. We're making high end custom menswear. You know, it's like, this isn't just, this isn't off the, this isn't just off the rack stuff. You know, this is like, this is, it's, you know, it's, it's the best. That's the thing is like the, the fabric and the stuff that I'm showing you is, you know, it's, it's high end. It's the real deal for sure. So, and I don't want to water down what it is we're doing. I like that we're doing that. I like that we're doing it out of Baltimore. I like that we're doing it out of an unassuming place. But it's like the people that know, know that this town has a very rich history for garment making. It's, it's like very, very big. And so if we do what we're doing here, what we built here, and then we put it together with the star power of what's going to happen with Los Angeles, is that it's, you know, big things are happening. This is, this is a bit of a breather that's happened with everything with COVID and you just hang back and you wait it out and then we make the push when it's time so it's that's that's the approach i'm taking sorry for the long-winded answer but it's like those are um you know I'm, I'm i'm really proud of what the especially with the seeing the young guys kind of when they sort of come into their own you know what i mean they're sort of timid at first and then they start getting suited up and the the confidence kind of comes out of them and then they're telling me how to do everything <laughs> they want to run the show afterwards <laughs> Chris, I'm glad you mentioned the, the, star, the star power in LA. It, it just brought to mind, uh, what have you seen the transition or the difference in your industry? And, and, you know, as far as how social media is affecting it or impacting it, it just comes to mind. There's um, also in the West Coast, which is um, David, is it David Augustine? With uh, McGregor. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's the name I, I forgot, but with Conor McGregor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and you're seeing now, or at least I'm seeing, I don't know. Um, there is a lot of more star power combining and doing a lot of collaboration. Sure. Yeah. I mean, collaborations are, you know, it's, it's big when you can get, you know, when you can get bigger names that you're putting yourself together with, but it's also kind of like, I mean, the Colin McGregor suit was kind of famous, you know, and like we can do that stuff. We can, put whatever you want. You know, it's like, I mean, I, you know, we can do all that stuff. Yeah, we, can, yeah. we can customize anything. It's like, if you have the money, sky's the limit. Sure. Really. So, so it's like, but I, you know, it's like, and look, there's people who love what McGregor's doing and everything like that. I, 
I tend to want to ratchet it back a little bit. You know what I mean? Is it's like I don't need to stitch that in the suit. You know what I mean? Is it's like there's other ways to do that. Without, sure, of course. You know, I but, mean, he could have he could have won the last fight. That would have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went there. <laughs> hey, man. No. You know what I mean? No, it's no, like, it's true. I, I'm mentioning that just because of, of, of the industry you're in. I, I've noticed a change, and, and you probably know more than I. That's why I'm mentioning it. What have you noticed as far as you mentioning the West Coast star power? And that just came to mind. And I'm sure there's other athletes or movie stars or whatever entertainers out there yeah. that a lot of tailors or people that do what you do and I'm sure it sort of helped them. Right. Well, so, you know, it, it's interesting cause it's like Seth is, you know, Seth's bringing a little bit of a different West coast feel to stuff. Right. Cause it's like, he's uh, you know, one of the things, you know, we, we have uh, the, the fabric that's out there right now is amazing. Right. There's some crazy stuff that's out there. And one of the things is bamboo, right. Bamboo, you can make hard floors out of, and, you know, furniture and everything, but it also makes super soft fabric that you can make baby blankets out of and sport coats, really cool looking stuff. that's very breathable and doesn't wrinkle like linen. So it's like, it's funny because Seth calls it the California cashmere, it's, you know, because it's like, it's really soft. It feels really great. So he's been working with stuff like that, but then he's also, you know, started getting into doing stuff with some bomber jackets and just trying a bunch of different stuff to see what's going to work. But I think that, you know, without just being like, oh, the older dude, but it's like, I think that things are going to kind of come back around where people are just going to sort of tighten up their look with everything. Because that's what usually happens when you come out of some sort of an economic downturn is that people kind of all of a sudden it's like, and when you've had almost a year to chill out in sweatpants and stuff, it's like, no, it's the time to kind of get back dressed again and get back out there in the world. So I think there's going to be an upswing that's going to happen where the casual stuff is going to be. It, you know, it's like, it's, it's not, you know, the novelty is kind of gone in all of it. You know what I mean? And so, and if you look at, I'm taking the approach and I think it's going to be, it's, I think it's going to kind of go all over the world. Is it, I think there's going to be a roaring twenties thing that's going to happen again, where people really are celebrating going out and dressing up and expressing their individuality and everything. I think that's, what's getting ready to happen. And that's, that's what we're looking to see the next phase of thing. We don't want to go too casual with everything because you can do casual till the cows come home. But we're, you know, when you see some of the bigger players and, you know, at some point, you know, there's nothing like dressing up, you know, it's like, you can have all the money in the world, you, but you rock, you walk in with your joggers on and it's like, you're not, you're, it's like you walk into a room of people that are well-dressed, you're never going to be respected the same. You know what I mean? It's just not. I mean, it's like there's a code, you know, there's there's definitely a code that goes with it. And um, I never thought I'd be in this position with this, you know, but it's like I, I like being here and, I, and like I love the clothes that we're making and the quality that we're doing and everything like that. And um, but I, I think that that I think that the shift that's getting ready to happen is going to be back in because historically that's what's happened. Right. It's like when you get unemployment rates like what are happening right now can you afford to be casual anymore? It's like, you know, you got, you got, it's a, it's going to be super competitive, right? Yeah. Everything's going to be very super competitive. So you're going to want to kind of bring your A game all the time. And that's, that's what I think is getting ready to happen. It's just, it, it's, it's just not yet. We're especially East coast. We're in the middle of winter and it's all this political change and everything that's happening as it warms up, it's just going to start to shift back. And I think people are itching for it. So, it's, so that's, you know, I, I, I think that's what's going to happen. But we've been testing the waters, you know, and I, like I said, I'd let the young cats try different stuff and see what to, see what's going to fly and what's not going to fly. And, you know, we can we can be we're nimble. We can be yeah. nimble, which is great. So, you know, we try different stuff and see what's going to stick and everything like that. And um, but I mean, yeah, even just what I was showing you, the, you know, we're doing anything from like real clean, classic business stuff. that's still really nice and fitted and everything to, you know, funky velvet jackets, if you want to do that. I mean, we can get as, as out there as anybody wants to be um you know but it's like i like it to really represent the person well yeah yeah that's good what do you know now that you wish you would have known at the start of your career Ooh. um geez I, you know i think that you gotta you gotta kind of learn it as it happens you know what i mean and like you need to so i I couldn't have made the investments that I made. I, I, I didn't have the funds to do it then. So it's like, there was things that I wanted to do, <clears throat> but I started this business and like, I didn't have any, I did, I did 
totally invest my in, in my own savings and you know i didn't have the i didn't have lines of credit and everything to be able to go and do that so as much as much as i would have wanted to do things differently whatever it all kind of had to go step by step i had to grow from the one space to the next and grow as a person and like i don't know that i really could have i don't know that I really could have changed that much really you know it's like i think that I, you know i've i, I would like to you know, there was a point when we had half a dozen people working here you know what I mean? But it's like, and I thought that was the answer was more people is going to make, but it's not, it's the right people. And, and like, I think maybe that might be the best thing is like finding the right people that really have the passion that you can develop because that's the fun stuff. You know what I mean? And so it's like, maybe that would be the part is like working harder to find the right people. But I think kind of you had to go through maybe having some of the wrong people or not the right fit to realize what you really like. I think you got to know what you don't want sometimes to know what you do want. Okay. Okay. What is the next five year looks like? What's the future hold? We gotta, we gotta get back to where we were a bit. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a hold steady, build it back up. I think it's going to take a while before I can really make any bold moves. That's, you know, it's like, I think, I think holding steady, getting back to getting back to where we, where we had been is the, 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 you got to start with that. We're making some changes right now. We're doing some things that we have in the works that are, um, you know, that are, that are going to be modernizing some stuff and everything like that. But I also don't want everything to be totally modern. We're an old school business. It's like, you know, I, I like that. Yeah. 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 Last question, Chris, what do you like yeah. to do? I, I, I know you're into a lot of things with music, drumming, skateboarding yeah. uh, and your free time. What do you like to do for fun? Uh, well, like I say, I like old cars, motorcycles, stuff like that. So it's like, uh, things that go fast, <laughs> like, kind of like that. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the fun stuff. And, you know, like I said, I have a family, I have a German shepherd dog that I love. So it's like, you know, I, I, life is good. You know, it's like, I, I, I like the family life. It's good. Sure. Sure. You, you, you yeah. said your car is black, right? Or does it have any pink in it? Does it have the company color or no? It's no, just, <laughs> just black, just black. It's, but it does have the thing that made me go and buy this car. The thing that put it over the top is it, it has a black and white houndstooth interior that is just so cool looking. And it was like that, when I saw that, I was like, I gotta have this. That's cool. By the way, I'm curious, why, why the black and white as the company color? I'm sorry, not black and white, black and pink, I meant to say, as the company colors. It happened because as we were building the first website is that, um, we, were, we had the logo designed, but not the right color. And as we were laying out the website, we were trying to put the logo up on there. And we had this picture that was of me. It was a shot that was like from here to here, right? You couldn't tell who it was, but it was just a focal point of the tie. And the tie that I was wearing was like fuchsia kind of color. Okay. And anything we were trying to put with the logo next to it, because we were trying, like we were trying gold and like all these other, and it wasn't working. And Aaron, who's developer of the website, pulled the color off of the tie and dropped it in, you know, you Photoshop, you can do that. Yeah. And it changed the color to it. It was like, that's the color. And so I would have never thought that pink was going to be a color that we would use, but it's sort of a pinkish fuchsia kind of color, but it just, it looks really good with black. It's a good, strong, you know, it's like the colors look really good together. And so it just, it stuck from 10 years ago. And so we've kind of stuck with it and like, it just, it really works. Also, I think it's a good, like, cross between you know like feminine masculinity you know and like but they look it's a it's a strong juxtaposition it looks uh, it looks great together so i've been really happy with it that's great I, I, I like the colors thank you where where can people find you if they want to learn more about you and your company where can they find out more information uh best spot is just go to the website which is christopher schaefer.com it's c-h-r-i-s T O P H E R Schaefer is S C H A F E R um, dot com, and then you can go from there to all you know all the social media and everything like that, which we're you know pretty active on. All that. Fantastic, Christopher. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I greatly yeah. appreciate it. I had a good time, man. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Take care. See ya. Bye bye. Bye.